to introduce myself a little bit, I'm Stuart Thomas. I'm a senior reporter at Burn Media, which encompasses four websites, Meme Burn, Venture Burn, Gear Burn, and Motor Burn. Um, so the, the kind of ones that are pertinent to you guys, obviously Meme Burn and Motor Burn. I'm not Motor Burn, but please go to Motor Burn if you like cars. Uh, Meme Burn and Venture Burn, which I cover social media, media insights, and startups and e-commerce and entrepreneurship and all that kind of stuff. Um, please forgive me if I feel a little bit awkward during presentations at times. Um, I am a writer, I'm not a professional speaker by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, so after I got the invite to talk today, I thought, thought about the title and thought, well, your new video overlords probably aren't out of high school yet. Um, and that's what you need to start thinking about when you're thinking about the future of video and how to incorporate video into whatever it is you're doing. Um, so, but before we get to them, um, we need to look at how the world of media is changing right now. And to start with that, I don't know if I hope this works. Uh, uh, sorry, we just need internet. Sorry, I should have mentioned that before. Okay, so just, just a bit of background to the video that, that I'm trying desperately to play here. So it's by a guy called Yusuf Omar, who works for ENCA. And he's pioneered something called selfie stick journalism. So the reason he's able to get into the water like that and get in like that is because all of Yusuf's stuff is shot using cell phones, using smartphones. Sometimes it's him with a selfie stick, sometimes it's somebody else with a selfie stick. You couldn't do that with an ordinary big camera rig like most um, camera crew, most uh, big, big media players would traditionally use. And so that gives you kind of an inkling of where big media is going. That's big traditional media. Um, sorry. So what that quote says, sorry, it should actually be highlighted. It was. Um, so it says being able to edit, edit, shoot, and send on one device like a smartphone means I'm packaging news stories faster and creating content with mobile viewers in mind and mobile first, as opposed to simply making TV content to fit on a cell phone screen. And you're going to see more and more of that in the traditional media space. So if somebody like NCA has adopted that, uh, think about what people like Sky News, what BBC News are doing. Um, they're all adopting and playing in that kind of mobile video content creation space. And that's just traditional media. Hands up, how many people know who this guy is? Cool. So I mean, you guys know that's PewDiePie. He's YouTube's biggest, he's the biggest earner on YouTube in terms of dedicated YouTube stars. Uh, he's 25 and his real name is Felix Killeberg and his pre-tax earnings in 2015 were around $12 million. It's for a guy that does not very good game reviews and other random videos on YouTube. So that's, it's, it's strange to think that um, Something that's only 11 years old already has people earning millions and millions of dollars on it, tens of millions of dollars on it, just from using that medium exclusively. Uh, and so PewDiePie is 25, which fits pretty perfectly with YouTube's average age demographic, 
as you can see, 25 to 34 are where the majority of its users are. Um, it's actually falling off a little bit in the 18 to 24 age group. And then I think you'll kind of see those 25 to 35, 34 year olds eventually become the 35 to 44 year olds. You'll just kind of see that kind of gradual progression. Um, but it's not really where teenagers are. So not really where the people who are going to be building media in and creating media in 10 years time are, not where the people who are going to be looking and hungry for media in 10 years time are. Where they are is on, on products designed exclusively for mobile. So the way to think about, it, like, think about it like this, the first iPhone came out in 2007. That means that 18 year olds today have, had, have lived in a predominantly smartphone world since they were nine. The first, the first phone they owned was probably, will probably have been a smartphone in all likelihood. And that's increasingly the case amongst all demographics, across all income classes, across all wealth divisions. So where are they? Well, in a lot of, place, in a lot of instances, they're on Snapchat. 45% of Snapchat users are aged 18 to 24. Compare that to the graph we saw at YouTube just now. Um, and that's, that's probably why Snapchat felt comfortable turning down an offer from Facebook for $3 billion why that today they're valued at $19 billion. Even though they haven't really figured out their advertising model, they present a potent future for, for advertisers, for media, for whatever product they get out there, they, they're going to be on it. And there's also a lot of news organizations using um, Snapchat. So I will share this presentation. I will make sure that Chani gets this presentation and that you'll be able to actually read it. I don't know why it's decided to kill my formatting. Uh, but so you've got people like The Verge, you've got people like Mashable, you've got people like Huffington Post all using Snapchat in innovative ways. So traditional media is catching on to that too. Uh, but if they feel the need to catch on to that, then surely the rest of us should too. And if that's what people who've grown up with smartphones are doing, then what li what's next for um, the media space and video space? And one of the suggestions for that is that's, sorry, that reduces 360 degrees and video. Um, so, and VR, should I say. So one of the big highlights we saw from Mobile World Congress, one of the world's biggest mobile um, events this year was an increasing number of VR headsets coming out. We're seeing VR headsets become increasingly affordable, heading towards the $600 mark. Um, you've also got kind of affordable semi VR hacks like Google Cardboard, which incredibly cheap, $5 I think for a, an official Google Cardboard, even cheaper if you build it yourself, um, Luba utilizing your mobile phone. So imagine and we're just at the very start of that. So imagine what people in nine years time exposed to VR headsets, when VR headsets become near ubiquitous the same way smartphones have. Imagine what their, their approach to content will be and what their approach to video will be. Those are the guys that are gonna be producing video but also consuming it. So you have, to you have to bear them in mind too. So, and to give you an idea of some of the innovative things that people are doing with 360 degree video, this is this is Mythbusters, and it's it's a video that allows you to explore. Yeah, but when ordinarily it would allow you to explore the whole video, look at the 360 degree kind of stuff, a 360 degree view of the video, 
which means that every time you watch the video, you can get a different experience of it for an almost infinite set of experiences. And people are using 360 degree videos to make feature films, they're using it for campaigns, they're using it in all sorts of really interesting ways. So I think my final message is that if you want to think about how people are going to be using video in the future and what your new, your new video overlords are going to be doing, um, you need to be, for a starter, looking at what Snapchat's doing right now, what, what social networks like Snapchat are doing in terms of video and then looking at emerging technologies around video. And I, I suppose the, to borrow from Steve Jobs is to stay, stay hungry, stay foolish in that, in that regard and just keep playing with it and find what works for you, I guess. Cool. Thanks.